just goes out to the place that her best friend killed themselves and you know she's kind of just like feeling down and contemplating like if that's a choice that she wants to make for herself as well and well who ends up coming along Killian and he just it's it's honestly a lot you guys but they end up connecting and he at the end like wants to expose a lot of things to her that is what I'll say about this book he wants to expose a lot of the things and a lot of the, the truths to her and just the way that he goes about it is like crazy and he ends up becoming obsessed with her and he's like the playboy like you know womanizer type guy and um Glendon is like the good girl you know the favorite sibling and it kind of just like ties both of their lives together along the way and now they end up like falling for each other I will say that this book is a dark unconventional romance and it is very spicy and very you know what I'm saying there are a lot of triggers that could potentially be in this book for somebody um, sorry I would say to read that before you decide to like delve into this book um, and it can be read as, as a standalone I know that there's other books in the series um, but it can be read as a standalone but honestly it was so good it was so good it's definitely different from anything that I've read before and if you're not like really into like spicy romance type books this probably won't be for you but it was so good so the next book that I read is call it what you want and I had been eyeing this book for such a long time I came across it I believe just like scrolling on Amazon and this was before I got a Kindle so I was actually planning on buying this book um, and then like I don't really know what happened I just kind of like put it to the side I saved it for later in my cart and didn't really ever come back to it and then when I got my Kindle I saw that it was on Kindle Unlimited and I was like I want to read that I mean why wouldn't you read a bunch of books that are pretty much like essentially free right that's kind of my mentality <laughs> when I read things on Kindle Unlimited I'm like technically it's like kind of free anyways sorry I decided to read it on Kindle Unlimited and this book this book was really good it's not really popular I haven't seen like any book talkers or bookstagrammers or anybody talking about this book so this book is about Salone and Ethan they meet in college and you know Salone they meet they meet in college and they like develop this like relationship that is like never really defined and um Salone pretty much thinks like this is the guy for me this is the guy that I'm gonna spend the rest of my life with and build a life with and that is what she's thinking and then we have Ethan on the other hand who knows that he doesn't want to be in a relationship he doesn't ever see himself getting married or settling down or anything like that but for some reason he keeps Sloane on the line he's constantly like pulling her back in I think in like the dating world this term is called breadcrumbing like when you give someone just enough to like make them you know pay attention to you and keep them on the line and then you just like disappear so that is the situation this is an almost love story and it just follows them through their college experience and the way that they you know are drawn to each other and obviously like Salone is like very much into Ethan and is like this is the, he's the one this is the guy for me like this is the guy I want to marry you know and she really goes back and forth with like wanting to like put her life and the things that she wants on hold for this guy who like doesn't give her the time of day and he's always telling her like you know we can try this I don't want to put a label on whatever this relationship is and you know but 
obviously, but you gotta read it. You have to read it to understand everything. And the ending was so good. And this was just such, this was definitely like one of like my favorite reads this month. So the next book that I read was Locked by K.L. Steele. And this was a book that was highly, highly recommended on Bookstagram by a pretty popular dark romance bookstagrammer. And it was supposed to be very spicy, very like dark. And I hated this book. <laughs> I hated this book because I didn't really get it. It is kind of a fantasy because there's two twin brothers going after this like mortal girl. And one brother is, anyways, I can't remember what the brothers are. They're like, they're, oh my god. See, this is why I don't read like fantasy type books because I just don't get it. One is, it's literally blowing my mind. Everything is like slipping my mind today. Anyways, the brothers are twins and they, their dad is from like the underworld and they're like chasing this mortal girl. Honestly, this book was so short, but I didn't like it. And I, like, I just, I can't get into fantasy just because like, I, like my brain can't understand that kind of stuff. <laughs> I think like one of the brothers was like a bat or something. He had wings. It's literally just slipping my mind like what he is. This is so embarrassing. I'm supposed to be a professional. I'm supposed to be a professional book reviewer and I'm failing right now. Anyways, Locked by K.L. K. Steele. It's also like a dark academia as well, but honestly, like it just wasn't my favorite and that's why like it wasn't good to me but it might be good to one of you i wish i could like recall this book somehow in my brain um to like tell you guys <laughs> i do apologize i am so terrible anyways it was like 120 pages it was like almost a novella type situation and um yeah, I just didn't enjoy it because that's just not what I like to read. I tried to kind of like branch out of, you know, what I like and what I know to give it a shot. And it just wasn't for me. But like I said, it's 120 pages or 122 pages. Sorry, it might be for you. So if you read it, let me know if you liked it. If you've read it before, let me know what you think. I just, it wasn't my favorite. <laughs> Next book that I read this month was called The Royal by Susan Stoker. This is a Cinderella-esque retelling story. So this is about Cal and Juniper. Cal is a royal and he is ex-military as well. And one day his cousin tells him about this girl that he met online that is like dealing with a stalker and pretty much Cal's family, you know, tells him since, oh, since you're a royal, can you go and stay with this girl and her family and catch her stalker? So, of course, he can't say no. And he goes to their house and the minute he steps out the car, he sees this like beautiful, plus size, voluptuous girl and he's like immediately like infatuated with her and has to know like who this girl is and like blah 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 so like when he's looking at her and admiring her he hears like somebody yelling at her to like come inside and he's like what's going on so then soon he finds out like that is the stepsister of the girl that he is supposed to be protecting um and it's just a Cinderella retelling and so it kind of follows that vibe like come to find out like so June is doing like you know like undercover nice things for Cal and she's like watch out like my stepsister you know messed up the lock in the bathroom and she's gonna try to see you naked and stuff like that like just like warning him that his fam that her family is pretty much only calling him here to their house so that he will marry her 
her stepsister and she'll become a princess. Um, and Cal ends up convincing Juniper to like run away with him and, you know, leave her family behind. Like, cause her dad died and that's why she lives with her stepmom and stepsister in the house that her father raised her in. So he pretty much convinces her to like leave it all behind and like run away with me, even though you like don't have a phone and no money and no job. And, um, <laughs> yeah, so that, that's the gist of it. Like if you know Cinderella, you would kind of like piece the story together a little bit. I gave this one star. I felt like Like he was there for like two days and was like, oh yeah, like you're being abused and needed to run away and be with me and we can like be in love. And then he also had like internal like conversations with himself that like she's too good of a woman and like I can't love her because he has a bunch of trauma from like being in the army and being tortured. Sees herself as like this really ugly girl, and there's like no way she could like pull a prince. And it was just really cheesy. The writing was really cheesy, and like some of the things that they would say to each other was so cheesy. And they just kind of like went back and forth about the same stuff constantly. Like, is my family gonna find me? Like, is my evil stepmother and stepsister gonna find me? And like, I wonder what they're thinking right now. And they're probably so mad that like we ran away together. And like it got so redundant and just bad and then her stepmom like put a hit out on her like hired some crackhead like literal like crackhead and it was just so cheesy and this book would not end I just felt like it would not end um so I gave it one star and that's why like it just wasn't good I was just scrolling in the kindle store and I was like okay like this might be good and it but again, like, that's just my opinion. It might be something that you're into. Like, don't listen to me. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, so then after I read that, I was, like, on this, like, royal Prince Harry type vibe. On this, like, Prince Harry type cloud. Since I had read one royal book, right? I was like, what will another royal book do? What's the harm in it? So I read very, very popular Red, White, and Royal Blue. If you have not read Red, White, and Royal Blue, it is so good. Okay, I'm going to tell you about it. It's about Alex Claremont Diaz. He is the first son of the United States, and his mom is, like, white, and his dad is Hispanic, and, you know, his mom, the first female president and like the first like mixed household and she's divorced and they're from Texas. They are, like this story is based so close. They actually like named the city that I'm from in this book that I was born and raised. So that was super special to me. And so anyways, 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 anyways. Um, so it's just a bunch of like really pivotal things things happening in the U.S. and across the pond, as they like to say, is Prince Henry. Prince Henry, not Prince Harry, okay? Prince Henry. So, pretty much the media has deemed him and Alex as, like, arch nemesis. So, the White House is, like, talking to the royal family and they're like, okay, we need to get them together to, like, make up and look good for the press because the elections are coming and Alex's mom needs to get re-elected. Therefore, he needs to make her look good. So, their teams set it up and they end up reconnecting for the press and like doing like staged photo shoots and stuff to show people like, no, there's no bad blood here. Like, we're really friends and we get along and we've been friends for so long. And they just go through like this secret like quarrel between each other 
messing around a little bit with each other and developing feelings for each other. Henry knows that he is gay. Alex has like this internal conflict and struggle because he's not saying that he's not gay, but he's just never thought about it. And that kind of throws him for a loop, even though like in the book they talk about him messing around with like one of his like middle school or high school best friends. But then he was like, oh, I never thought that I was gay. Okay. So anyways, Alex discovers that he's bi and Alex and Henry want to be together, but they know they can never be together. Like it'll just never work because of who they are in the public eye and like the important roles that they play. Girl, it's so messy. It is so, so messy. And I loved every minute of it. So the book is just taking you through them pretty much being outed and like how they work through that and get to be together or if they don't get to be together, like what is going to happen? And it is so messy. It is so, 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 so messy and so, so good and quirky and cute. And I just loved that these characters just got to be like who they are because I feel like a lot of times in LGBT books, they try to like make the characters these uber like gay, not like uber gay, that's not what I'm trying to say, but you know what I mean? Like, oh, you know, in school I was on the LGBTQ like anti-bullying committee and day I wear rainbow, you know what I'm saying? Like, they just try to make them too much of an ally in their own congregation. But these characters were so well written that they just got to be themselves while also being gay, you know what I'm saying? Or being bi and being gay. And it was so good. The only thing about this book, I will say, is it did feel a little bit long. It just was a this book was so, so good, and I'm not even, like, fully explaining it right. Like, I feel like everybody has to read this book to get its true gist, and Amazon Prime Video made a movie, so I, I already started watching it, I just, like, wasn't able to, like, get all the way through it yet, but I'm so excited to watch that. It was so, this book was so good, and I loved it. You know, I'm super biased because I'm a Texan, but it just, it just, it was so good. And I, I do tend to love things that are, like, royal-based. I love, like, thinking about, like, the royal family. And, it, yeah, it, it was good. It was a five-star read for me. So, after I read Red, White, and Royal Blue, I definitely 
so she just has so much on her plate and she ends up connecting with Midge and she can kind of, you know, see through his like bad boy, hardened, cold heart exterior and this book just kind of goes through Mitch working through his dramas and his issues and being a better person and how Noah helped, you know, unlock that side of him and unlock him wanting to do the work to make himself better. It goes through Andy coping with her, the loss of her parents, helping her brother cope with the loss of their parents, and like having to like be that protector, be that provider, and that that parent. Um, and then also at the same time, like they end up falling for each other, obviously, like duh. And they kind of have like a love hate relationship with each other, and they're trying to understand each other. And Andy is trying to understand Mitch and his lifestyle and a hockey player and you know why he feels a lot of the things that he feels and it just was so good I you definitely definitely need to read it I think it was 250 plus pages it wasn't too long it was so good it was such a nice palate cleanser and I think I'm gonna read more books by her because she writes a lot of hockey romance so I think I'm gonna check it out Alrighty guys, that was the end of this video. I just feel like this month was so long. I kind of had trouble like recalling